All right, guys, welcome to the third part of this tutorial where we are going to implement the basics behind Superbase authentication in this project. We just built a bunch of the user interface elements, and so now we're going to get into integrating Superbase. One of the first things we have to do is go into our project and then do a bunch of NPM installs. So we are going to NPM install everything related to Superbase authentication. So firstly, at Superbase slash Superbase dash JS then at superbase slash SSR, which is superbase server-side rendering, and then at superbase slash auth dash UI dash svelte, which is an authentication component that makes logging in and logging out really easy. And then at superbase slash auth dash UI dash shared. I know that's a lot, but then we can press enter to install all those. All right, now that all of those have been installed, we are going to go over to app.d.ts. I'm trying to make the TypeScript side of this tutorial as simple as possible, but this file is where we have all the different types for our SvelteKit application. Inside of interface page data right here, we can define certain things that are going to be loaded into our page data. We're going to create some code in a second, which is going to create two variables. The first one being Superbase, and the second one being the session. Superbase is our kind of Superbase client, how we actually communicate with the service, and the session is our user's session. And so we can import these types from Superbase by saying Superbase client from this library here, and then also session. So Superbase client is always going to exist, and the session is going to be typed to a session, or it could be null if there's no user logged in. And so that's all we need. It's going to make our lives way easier because when we interact with these variables, it's going to show that it's an actual session or it's going to show that it's Superbase, which I will explain when we actually get into that. And so to initialize Superbase and to initialize our user's session, we need to create a file inside of routes called pluslayout.ts. Pluslayout.ts is going to run a load function which runs before our layout gets set up. And so inside of here, you can run things such as initialize the authentication or initialize Superbase, which is what we're going to do. Firstly, I'm going to import our API keys from .env.local right here. So import public underscore the Superbase URL and also public underscore the Anon key, which we're going to use in a second. We can then import a SvelteKit specific type, which is type of layout load from dot slash types like that. And I'm then going to npm run dev down here. Sometimes npm run dev is going to fix these type of SvelteKit type errors. So if you're getting an error there, that'll fix it. And now we can define our load function by saying export const load is typed to layout load. So guys, for beginners, this layout load is going to be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to try and do everything I can to get it to kind of click for you guys. So it's going to be an asynchronous function and it's going to have some properties inside this object we're going to get out in a second. And so we can make an arrow function by saying arrow pointing to the logic of the function here. Load is expecting a returned object, which we are going to fill with data that's going to be sent to our layout.svelte. And layout load gives us some properties we can access from the function itself. For example, fetch, data, and depends. And so some of this is really Superbase specific, but first of all, we have to say depends on Superbase auth. You don't really have to understand this part, but it's pretty much saying that there's a tag superbase auth determined by superbase, which this load function depends on. Then we need to create our actual superbase client. So this is the client that we use to talk to superbase. We can go up here and say import create browser client from at superbase slash SSR. We can also get is a browser and parse from here. These are some things necessary to set up Superbase. It's important to recognize that in this tutorial, we're only going to use the browser client to make the authentication simple. So I'm going to say export const server-side rendering is equal to false. This is going to make it so we don't need any strange server-side authentication, which is more complicated than what we're already doing. But now that we're not doing server-side rendering, we can just do a create browser client here, and it's going to be passed in the public URL first, and then the public anon key next. These two identifiers pretty much say, this is a browser client for this specific Superbase project, which is the one we just made. 
Now we have to pass in some options into how we want this SuperBiz client to be defined. It's a bit confusing, but we need this global property to be equal to fetch. This is because the fetch property is something that SuperBase is defining in the background. And then we need to do some custom options to how the cookies get handled. So in the background, it's going to be calling cookies. I know this is a little bit confusing, but eventually it's going to call a get function like this. The reason why we have to define custom logic is because we have to say, if we are on the browser, do something. If server, something else. And actually it's gonna be the other way around in our actual code here. So the first thing is we're gonna say, if we are not is browser. We are then going to return json.stringify data.session. One thing here is I'm gonna type this object up here to any. It's not best practice, but it's gonna make our code simple here. And so this json.stringify is pretty much the session in a way the server understands it. And then if we're on the browser, we want to send a cookie over to the browser. So we're gonna say const cookie is equal to parse document.cookie. And then we are going to return cookie of the certain key it's being stored as. I know that's a little bit much, but this is kind of just stuff that's defined by Superbase. If you're a little lost, don't worry too much. That's all we need to do for that. This next code is much more simple and regular kind of code <laughs> where we say const data is equal to session. And this is an object that we're destructuring from the await superbase.auth.get session. So this get session is going to return a data property and inside the data property, there is gonna be a session property which we care about. And this return statement at the bottom is returning stuff, remember, to our layout.svelte. So we're going to return the soup base and also the session like this. We can then press save, and now we have access to super base and session in any route we want, which is pretty cool. Because it's on our most external layout, we can access these anywhere in our application. So inside of our routes, we can make a login route, which we can then make a plus page.svelte in. We can then set up a very basic kind of structure here for our Svelte case component or our Svelte case page, I mean. And I'm going to go over to our email right here, go to this page as Svelte and just copy this outside hero content right here, just to give us a structure for our new login page. I'm then going to limit the width of this, so width dash 800 pixels. And then I'm going to make a simple flex column. I'm gonna say div class flex dash call like this. And I'm going to make a little paragraph that says create an account or login below. And now we can import a component from Superbase auth UI to make a very simple kind of login component here. When we were over in layout.ts, we made this Superbase and this session right here. So from any route, we can say export let data, and this is technically our page data. And so to get certain objects out of the page data, for example, the Superbase and the session, we can do this syntax where we destructure from the data object. And so in order to listen to changes, either from Superbase or session, we can say dollar sign colon, which is a reactive statement in Svelkit. We can then say Superbase comma session is gonna be destructured from data. Oh, and this has to be wrapped around like that because it's wrapping around the entire statement to make it reactive. And so if we hover this, we can see we actually are gonna have access to our current Superbase client. Now that we have the Superbase client, we can import the auth component so import auth from this library right here, then import a theme, so theme super from this library right here, and then we are good to go. To initialize this auth component, we can go down here and say auth like this, and then say superbase client is equal to superbase like that. I'm gonna make it a theme is equal to dark, and then appearance is equal to theme, it's gonna be equal to theme super, and then style, it's going to be equal to, I want the inputs of this, so like the actual text inputs to be width of 400 pixels. It's just going to make it a little bit wider for us. And so if we go over to our slash login route, we can actually console.log superbase and also console.log the session. So let's go over to slash login. All right. We can actually press the login button right here to get there, even though it's not synced up yet. And now we actually have our auth component set up for us, which is pretty cool. If you inspect element, you can actually see the Superbase client right here. And it's gonna be a little bit like magic, but we can press this and don't have an account sign up. I'm going to put in an account I'm gonna use throughout this video. 
So it's just gonna be coopercodes3 at gmail.com. My password is gonna be coopercodes. And then I'm gonna press sign up. You guys are gonna see we're not doing anything to manage this sign up happening. But if you click on it, we can trust that if we go over to Supabase, go over to authentication, we are gonna be signed up through email. One thing we can do to make it so you know, the person actually leaves the login page once they sign in, is we can do another reactive statement and say if session, then go to, which is from app navigation, which you used before, just the home page. And so if I refresh this page, because my session is here, let me refresh right now, it's going to redirect me to the home page, which is pretty cool. And you can even see on this page that's felt, we have our current user session. So you can see their access token, when it expires, the user, what their email is, a bunch of stuff is in here. And so let's actually take these variables and bring them over to our layout to make this nav bar actually work. <laughs> you know, make it show certain things that the user's logged in or not. So let's go over to layout.svelte and we can copy these first handful of lines here just to make our lives easier from the login page. Go to layout.svelte and we're just gonna copy them in. And usually we want this export led data at the very top. There we go. And so we know a user is logged in or not based off if the session is null. So if session is null, we have no user. If it's not null, we have a user. That's the basic way you can understand authentication with Supabase. So once we do all this setup, it's kind of simple. And inside of this HTML part, we can actually have little logic like if statements within it, which is a big part of Svelte. So for example, we can say pound sign if session doesn't equal null. That means that we do have a user, so we want to show the users my page. And then we can just close the if statement like this. So if no one's logged in, it's just gonna show pokey page, but if someone is logged in, it's gonna show my page. And because we're logged in, it's gonna continue showing my page right here. And so down here, we can actually do an if else statement. So if session is equal to null, that means we have no user, colon else, we can do an else statement, and then slash if to end the if statement. So if the session's null, I'm going to have the login button right here. If a user is logged in, I'm going to put their information right here. We can also get certain details out of a session. For example, the session.user.email. You guys will see, this is kind of cool. This is how we actually get the user's email. And because we're down here, I can also show off how to use the Supabase object for logging a user out. So I can go down here and say, make this an asynchronous function. And then we can say await, supabase.auth, which manages supabase authorization, dot sign out. This is going to sign our user out and it's going to update the session right here to kind of change if the person signed in or signed out. And so you'll see I have my logout button right there. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a, let's see here, class is equal to ML-2. So you guys will see if I press logout, it's not quite changing everything quite yet. This is because inside of our layout, we need to listen for the logout event. So on the top of layout, we can then say change is going to give us an asynchronous callback with the current change event and also the session we can put into here. And so if the event is equal to signed in, I want to do something called invalidate all which we need to import from app navigation. So it's just gonna be invalidate all. This pretty much forces all the data to reload. So if someone signs in, we want all the data to refresh is a simple way to think of that, that. If event is equal to signed out, for example, we press the sign out button, right? We want to await, go to the login. So we want someone to go over to the login page. So see if they signed out by accident, right? And we also then want to invalidate all. This is gonna make it so when we actually log out, it's going to refresh our page. And so you guys can see now, I did refresh, but the person is now gone. We can do a final test of all of our logic here by then going to this account and signing in again. It's gonna bring us here. And then if we press log out, it's gonna send us back to the login page. So I know that was a lot of content guys, but we just created a full authentication system in Svelkit. So seriously, pat yourself on the back. One last thing is when a user logs in and they show this my page is I actually wanted to go to my page and then the session.user.email like this. So if someone's logged in as coopercodes3 at gmail.com, it's going to bring them to their specific page is what this line does right here. All right, so I went over and I signed in again and I'm gonna press my page. 
All right, now it's gonna show me my specific page and I can go back and forth like this. In this next video, we're gonna talk about how to communicate with the Pokemon API. So I'll see you guys over there.